all right everyone welcome back to another episode of enigmatica 6 i hope everyone is doing great today i know that i am we're getting right back into things today and i have done a little bit of work off camera so i'm going to catch you guys up really quickly on that um and then we are going to jump into what we are doing today i put in a little bit of thought into what i want to work on today um and it's actually kind of a bunch of different things that will ultimately lead to something i would like to be doing down the line so with that being said, uh, for those of you who have kept up with the series and did watch the last episode, you know that we got up and going a better power generation uh, via thermal series here on our mod pack. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with what we got up and going from that. Now, I did go ahead and like I said, off camera, I did a little bit of work here so you could see. Um, I went ahead and I, I just put a little bit more work into our space over here. Uh, I'm getting a little bit of lag here. I think it might be slightly coming through on video. Um, but you know that's just how it, it it'll be sometimes right so anyways we have a, a nice area going in here did put a little bit more work like i said <clears throat> carving out the walls getting them a little bit more decorated and formalized carving out this space here i already have plans for this space i do want to get into the power mod i mentioned that in the last episode um however we're gonna hold off on that for right now um just to prioritize some other things then i did go ahead and i rerouted everything here, uh, which would be the thumbnail of the last episode, which was actually different than what we had in the um, in the actual video itself, is because I took the thumbnail after I had done all this additional work on it. So we do now have two compression dynamos going here. One is with creosote oil, um, which is what we're getting from, or we've had backlogged from our um, coal coke generation um, over on our... Um, our main area over there and then i put in another compression dynamo to utilize tree oil actually to produce some power because tree oil it like it really does get you get a lot from tree oil um if you guys recall we looked at it the the other episode here tree oil in a uh, fractioning still yeah well um that's not what i want to do i want to see use cases in a compression dynamo it'll get you a million rf per bucket which is really good and it's relatively cheap to make um so if we come down here you can see i also did a lot of work down here making an access tunnel i really wanted to be able to get down here to work on anything that we had going on um and that goes all the way over to the main line that's over by like our bed and things like that over in that direction there um and then this is looping around and as you can see we haven't quite finished it yet but we are getting there um yeah and we ran some lines ran some lines that way um and right here we have a fractioning still uh which is pulling in the resin and uh and converting it over now we do have two uh importers here off of here we have an exporter and an importer and two importers i should say um it is exporting items as well as the the tree fluid or the tree oil i should say um and then the importer is obviously importing in resin so there you can see there it got that and a byproduct as well so those are both being um put back into the system and then over here is where we have our systems up and going so right now we have our extractor here which is getting our um, resin and then i already had one over here as well i moved them into a more consolidated space um, for our latex but i have turned this one off just because we don't really need it that much um, but we do have it going into our overall storage system um, so we we can keep that on hand in case we do need it down the line which we probably will need it down the line so if we come over here you can see we got a little bit of tree oil a little bit of latex um, our creosote oil is being used up relatively quick but i do have some coal blocks in here um, generating into coal coke and that's kind of what i want to focus on today there's one thing i would really like to get up and going from immersive engineering and that would be a fractioning still i believe is what it's called in order to make gas i believe is what it is um we'll have to go into immersive engineering here yeah a dis distillation distillation tower um <clears throat> which is environmentally unfriendly it says but it's a large multi-box structure that uh separates crude oil into a number of byproducts which is really nice um but it takes a lot of components to get it up and going so uh it uses a, a good amount of flux as well so a good amount of rf so 2000 or 2k rf uh basically per tick converting up to 75 millibuckets of crude oil into diesel lubricant gasoline and bitmen per tick um so i i want to work towards this but one of the things that we do have some problems with getting up and going is steel now i'm sure you guys remember this uh, for those of you who have kept up with the series steel is actually relatively hard to get rolling with because there's only one way in the 
in the pack to get it, um, which is pretty much uh, just combining coke dust of any kind and iron. Now, I do want to get an induction smelter up and going. I think this would be one of our best ways to actually get this going um, to produce what we need, and it'll produce it quicker. Now, realistically, byproduct or um, a passive generation would be better because then you're not using power, but it does take a lot longer to do. You know, for example, this right here running and making and producing this into cold coke doesn't take any power to run. It just takes time. So I want to have different options if we are trying to get stuff pumped out a lot quicker. So that's why I am thinking that we want to get this going so we can generate steel better. But then the other thing that we are going to have um, to figure out is whole coke because we do need coke dust in order to um, produce steel. And that's the only thing you can use is coke dust. And I have realized that if we get this py pyrolyzer, pyroly I, I think I'm probably mispronouncing it, but we can either put in coal and get coke dust which again goes kind of against what we were thinking uh, would be smart to do because you're utilizing a good amount of power it's actually a lot of power four thousand wow that is a lot of power to convert that i feel like they bumped that up on purpose man to to be really really pricey um in the power consumption in order to get just one output from it that's that's a lot man holy smokes i didn't realize it was that much to do it now obviously in a coke oven it's it's much different but i think this would be pretty cool because we can utilize this bitmin that we have bitumen um that we've been collecting up uh in order to uh to convert that into cold coke which would be really nice now, i don't believe we could take this stuff and make it into just normal coal at all unfortunately that would be really really nice if we could right i don't believe that is the case well, there's one more thing here let's double check just to make sure yeah i don't think so um so that's what i was kind of thinking it is nighttime here let's get sleep is sleep but um yeah i would really like to get some better steel production or better options for steel production i guess i should say right um because right now we have some steel up and going but in order to get that distillation distillation tower up and going it's going to take a whole heck of a lot more than that and one of the main things i do want to get from that is just gasoline like i'd really like to have all these backlogs of um different fluids and different oils and such so that we can use them on other projects that i have in mind now the other thing i also want to get up and going which we'll kind of see what timing we have here is a um a centrifuge because we are getting a good amount of honeycombs and i would really like to get a better multi-block centrifuge going in order to uh, help out with our honeycombs and convert them into usable products. So, and then also having better bees would be really good as well. A lot of stuff to do today. A lot, a lot of stuff. So, anywho, since let's try to get into a few things here um, and just get the ball rolling. So, like I said, we do have a, a little bit of steel there. And um, what I want to do though, yeah, as you can see, we have a lot of sooty honeycomb. Well, we have a lot of backlog of things. Maybe we, we should start with that first, actually. I do want to get into that. Maybe we'll save it for the end. But uh, maybe first we'll actually get into the centrifuge. Get that rocking and a rolling so that we can actually get some of those products um, from our bees figured out and not just uh, sitting in our inventory because we really could use a lot of those. So let's do that first. And I think I'm actually going to stick it out here. I think this would be a good place for it, maybe like up tucked up in here. I'm um, considering we already have stuff flowing underneath here for our um, tree oil that we are using. So I think this right here would be a super nice place for it. And we could even kind of bump this out a little bit more here. And maybe even sink it in even lower, right? Where's our hammer? There we go. And then what we'll just need to do is tie this into here, which probably runs right along over there. Um, which we probably we probably could go underneath for right let's see if we can hit this yep there it is right there perfect so that'll be our way that we can, can tie it into everything that we need um we got a lot of dirt on us don't need that don't need that there we go and we can kind of close in some of that so yeah it'll come up through there and then come up into here and into our centrifuge realistically though we'll actually need a better access point in order to get into it so maybe i shouldn't have uh close that off fully there we'll keep it like so so that we can get down in there and do what we got to do right okay any so 
what we're going to want to do is get this centrifuge up and going now this is a quest line within the resourceful bees um quests here you can see all the way at the bottom feed the bees and we've done quite a bit of this already now the last thing on this path is a multi-block centrifuge which is really nice to have now you can upgrade these but the base one is going to be super nice um, right off the bat now if you do want to read through this feel free to take the time and go through and and read it to pause the video i'm not going to go through it because we've gone through it before we know what we need though a centrifuge controller and 35 centrifuge casings now i've already bookmarked this on our um jei here so we can get this up and going so the centrifuge controller itself takes centrifuge casing so we need four of them to even get that going and then we need 35 of these so we basically need what what was that four i said so ba basically about 40 right we need almost 40 of these so we're going to need a decent amount of blocks of whatever we want how much aluminum do we have do we have much aluminum we have a little bit of aluminum but we really don't even have that much iron i would say so let's um Let's use up some of this aluminum, I would say. We'll use like three blocks, maybe. And then I thought I had more iron, but I think it's actually cooking up. Or it's not cooking up. It's uh, It's been smashed up and crushed up, but it's not ready to go just yet. We need to smelt it. So let's get that going. And I would also like to try to integrate a lot of this stuff together. And that's the problem that we're having right now, right? Is a lot of this stuff is separated and very manual which i don't mind doing to begin with right and i've said many a time on this playthrough that you know i am taking our time with a lot of this and making sure that we fully enjoy the series i mean that we could be way farther along if we really wanted to be right now but again we're, we're kind of relaxing and taking our time with it but at some point we do need to start integrating things and making sure that they are getting hooked up properly so anywho all right so we should be able to get a few from there so that would give us nine so we need about 10 more so we're going to need 10 more blocks um unfortunately and i think this only takes iron and aluminum right yeah that's that's a little bit unfortunate mm, but that went way down for some reason oh because we used it to make those that's why all right how many will we get off of this four blocks okay well this is going to take some time to do so Give me a minute, guys. I will go through and I'll get all of these crafted up. And once we're ready to go and get that multi-block up and going, I'll bring you on back. All right, guys, we are good to go here. I got everything up and going. It actually took me a hot minute. I need to go do some mining. It's another thing we got to add to the list. We need a better way of mining stuff. Um, but I went ahead. I got our controller going. I got our casings. And then I also have our importers and exporters. Obviously, because we want to import and export um, all of our goodies, right? All of our um, honeycombs and so on and so forth. So I think all we got to do is something along these lines, right? And I think we could place it on the bottom one. I think that would make the most sense for our setup as well. So we'll go like this, all around like so. And then I think we just put it there. Unless it's one more higher. I have, I have nine more. I think it's one more higher, actually. Put this up here. And we'll see if it automatically connects everything. It does not. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Let's take a peek here. So. Doesn't it really even tell us in here. That'd be nice, right? Be nice if it told us there. We do have a uh, stuff that we can get there. What we can also do is we could switch back over to our bees book here. I know I'm doing it wrong. So we got to uh, just take a peek at here. Multi-block centrifuge. Okay. It doesn't have to be in the middle one. That's our problem right there. We'll grab that. Plop that right there. And we should be good to go. Yeah, we have a interface now. And it does take power, so we're actually also going to have to run power to this bad boy. Um, which isn't too bad. We could definitely do that. We'll have to just kind of tie in um, over here. I know we have some um, power right down here. And we probably could just make a little tunnel here to get down to where we need to go so we can draw on that power. Now, eventually, once we have wireless power up and going, it'll make things a whole heck of a lot easier. Um, but for the time being, we don't have that available to us. So let's see, where do we want to bring this down at? Probably right here would make the most sense. We'll pull it down um, and then we'll have it run along here. I guess I'll just leave this open down here um, as an access tunnel. Again, um, doesn't hurt to have access tunnels. A lot of times I just like to cover things up and, and, and not have to deal with them. Uh, but I guess realistically in this instance, it probably just makes sense to uh, to leave it as is and somewhat be able to uh to get down here if we needed to 
So I'll just have to kind of adjust it a little bit later. So not too worried about it right now. We'll get it sorted out later. All right, so we'll have our exporter, importer, and then we're also going to need some power. Like I said, we're going to have to get up some universal cables, guys. So let's grab those. We only have eight. We're probably going to have to make a little bit more here. And also steel is needed to make these guys, um, which is um, also kind of a pain. That's why I think getting into some... Um, wireless power transfer relatively soon will be useful so we're not using too many resources on this um, but i'm not too worried about it just right now so there we go that is up and going we got power into it um and then all we got to do is our in import and export uh, so we could do our import here and then maybe our export on the side coming down here um since i don't think yeah that's that's covered up as well um so let's do let's see our exporter maybe to the side here i think that would be fine um, we're going to do items. Currently, we have our sooty honeycomb, right? We can export that into there. And then I believe we have our copper, maybe, is what it is. We probably should check, right? Yeah, our copy, copper, copper honeycomb. Um, and we can put that in there as well. So those will import those items into there. We're also going to need some cabling. So let's get that really quick. Refined storage. There we go. Cabling. Boom, boom, boom. That's all hooked in just like so. And then we'll do our importer here, um, which will in should import everything else that we get from it, right? Um, and it should automatically start doing that. You can see it already sucking everything into it. The only thing it won't take into it is any of the honey that we get as a byproduct. So as you can see, we're getting honey here. Um, and if we really wanted to, we could probably import it into our system. But I have a feeling it might be better to do glass bottles for it i'm a little bit conflicted on this what can we use honey for because we ran into this problem on our last playthrough of all the mod 6 where if we had some problems between it configuring to a different um mod of honey so we can get honey bottles going and it looks like we can convert it back I don't know if we can we can use a blast chiller to take honey and make honeycomb or honey blocks out of it i believe we would need eventually um or can we bottle up honey i think we can as well so it might make sense to actually get a second importer as well um and maybe put it right here next to it and have that for all of the honey so it would actually import all of our honey now let's see can we get that going here can we get an importer we do need another one of these not too bad to do and there we go then we could put this here but we want this to be fluids and i think by default it'll take it out anyway yep so we should be a hundred percent set up um, and good to go there so we can actually kind of just close that in for the time being um we'll definitely want to put a couple of lights down here do i have some planks on me uh i mean even if i don't i can grab them out of here grab some of these planks i do like them we had a lot of this wood laying around so i figured that we could just use it um, in this case scenario and we will just dig this out just so we can get down here because that is going to be the other thing as well is that if we ever want to switch out the honeycombs that we are pulling in to our system we're gonna have to be able to access it so being able to get down here is going to be relatively important for us um, and I don't know if there's an easy way. I mean, we could just do, yeah, but we can't even get up over there. Can we get up on the up opposite side? Maybe we probably can. So let's just do that. We're going to drill this out. Wow. Okay. That's interesting. Um, I feel like you never see that. I feel like you never run into emeralds, um, this high up, right? We're pretty high up. Like we're at 110 we're pretty far up in the air so that's very strange i would i would think it's very strange but hey maybe i'm i'm uh, wrong on that so all right we're getting all this taken out i am gonna grab this iron here because guys we are so low on iron it's not even funny and then we're gonna fill this in just showing you guys a little bit of a process that i go through for this now there are better tools that we can utilize for this definitely want to eventually get into like the building ga gadget and the exchanging gadget as well um but we don't have to right this very moment. Um, now, I don't think there's any reason for us to continue on down that way. I don't think we need to. Uh, so I am just going to get some torches in here. Just like so. So it keeps it nice and bright. We don't want any mob spawns down here, obviously, guys. Uh, I, I guess I'll just put in a lot of lights. <laughs> I guess I'm just going every other one now. 
but that should keep it nice and bright down here. Just like so. Perfect. Uh, a little bit dark on the other side, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, we should be a-okay uh, for the time being. I guess what I'll also do is just kind of encapsulate that off above us, so we're not seeing too much of it. I guess we could come all the way down because we dug a little bit too high there uh, for the time being. Okay, do we have more? We do have some more. Uh, and we'll just close all of this off. Now, we, we'll have to go back up and close off the top. But that could be later. We don't necessarily need to do that right now. And this allows us to be able to access that um, importer or exporter. Exporter is way up there. Oof, yikes. Okay, so we might actually need to, uh, to have some kind of ledge here so that we can hop up and get to that, uh, that exporter there. Um, do I have my... I think I do have my portable stone cutter on us. Um, and what we can actually do is take some of these... Oh, it actually won't let us in there. Okay, we could probably just go into crafting, right? Get some planks. That's all I want to do is get some planks here. Uh, we're going to throw a lot of this stuff into our system just to get it out of our inventory, just like so. And um, we don't need our stone cutter on us, so I'll do that. So we can easily get up here like that. And then what we're also going to need is um, some ladders here to be able to uh, get up here. So let's see, do I have some ladders in here? Hopefully I do. We do have six of them, perfect. And then we will just put these in like so. Okay. And I think it's actually gonna be almost the perfect amount. Pretty close, should be fine. Um, obviously not the uh, most pretty setup, I will admit myself. Um, it is a little bit atrocious to look at right now, but um, you know what? Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. We could easily just fill this in with some of these. To, uh, somewhat hide some of this all right we'll just come through like so and we'll cover up a lot of this to make it look a little bit nicer now we could obviously change this out for some different stone or whatever we wanted to do down the line but for the time being it makes it look a little bit nicer than all that mismatched stuff that we had before so and we could even, yeah, we could even put even more effort into it. But hey, it works for the time being. Now, the other thing we are going to want to do is get some more torches in here because we did take out a couple there and just make sure it is nice and bright here for us. We'll even put one over here. Cool. So that is all set up. We should be good to go. So we should be getting everything into our system um, around our, um, from our centrifuge, which is really, really nice. And we can even come up here and take a peek at how everything is going. We do need to replace a couple blocks here. I'm just realizing. Just like so. And then we can take a look. See, we're getting copper chunks and we're getting bitmen. Bitmen, right? Um, I really want to be able to take these coal coke chunks. Or, yeah, coal chunks, I should say. Um, and can easily convert them into what we need. Uh, it's a little bit harder to do, unfortunately. You could smelt it up in a blast furnace and get it um or i think there's other ways you could do it you get a lot if you throw them into the crusher actually uh if we throw it into a normal crusher does it give us the same thing or a pulverizer it doesn't look like it. it looks like a normal crusher would be our best bet for it so anywho all right so we are good to go there how far are we we're 23 minutes into the episode already holy smokes i guess we're spending a lot of time on just getting that up and going but it was totally worth it i do want to get some more bees going relatively soon some more useful ones um that cater obviously towards what we need one of the big ones being iron obviously we use a lot of iron and i would really love to have some iron bees in our apiary all right now I'm taking a look at here let's quickly look at our bitmen and how are we doing we actually have a good amount of ch of the chunks already uh, so i'm going to throw this into our crusher um, and that's going to give us a lot of coal. A coat. This is interesting. A zombie villager just chilling in here. Not really expecting that. Um, and then we should be able to throw these in here. And those will do their thing, right? The other thing we can do is use time in a bottle on this bad boy if we really wanted to. Um, we could uh, make it so it would give us a good output. Now, that is not giving us what I necessarily wanted. Um, I think because I was looking at the wrong thing, right? I think I was looking at the wrong. Interesting. Okay, hang on. Grab those. Can't these put in a? These could be put in a crusher and get that. What was I? Was I looking at something completely wrong? I think I was looking at something completely wrong. 
Now I have no idea what I was looking at. <laughs> um, oh, I think we craft them up into the clusters. No. These chunks. What do we... What? I'm so confused. Did I not see it? Yeah. Crusher. And it makes that... I have no idea, guys. I think I'm losing my mind. I thought it's. I thought it said coal. I'll have to rewatch the video after we get done here. I'm losing my mind. 110%. Uh, anywho, okay, so let's really quickly, since we have just a couple minutes left here in the episode, get one last machine up and going uh, that, that I would like to utilize, I think. So if we go into our, I know what I'm doing, uh, if we go into here, well, first, let's collect our quest here, get our stuff, and let's see what we got. We did get a bee. What did we get? A silver bee. Ooh, okay, that's actually pretty nice. Um, don't really need it right now, so actually what I'm going to do is put him in our backpack, because we'll take him downstairs a little bit later, um, and then we can kind of just put this stuff away for the time being. Okay, anywho, so I think getting an induction smelter up and going would be extremely useful for us for a number of different reasons, so let's do that. Wow, we are getting a lot of coal chunks. Ooh, some automation around that would be super nice right now. All right, guys, change of plans here to wrap out the episode. So I actually do want to put in a teeny bit of more automation around our centrifuge here um, just to convert some of that um, coal chunk, some of those coal chunks into actual coal so we can utilize it and I don't have to worry about it later. So if we come down here, I think what I'm going to do is tap into this one of these lines here. I think that would be useful to do. And really, we could just kind of put it along the side here. Uh, would make probably the most sense but what i want to get up and going is called a crafter now this is from rf tools utility um, and this is a machine that can handle up to two recipes at one time um, which is really nice so you basically put, put two recipes in here and you can pretty much do some auto crafting especially with importers and exporters from refined storage that's exactly what i would like to do um i don't know if i want to put them on the ground and have it like that um, i guess we could or we could do it here we could do it here to start with, right? Um, I guess it's going to kind of infringes on our setup here. Maybe we recess them into the walls just a little bit. Uh, I think that'd make it look a little bit nicer than what we currently have. So we'll put that here. Um, I already got my importer and exporter ready to go and some additional cabling. Obviously, we're going to need that. Um, we could easily just tie it into this, but I just want to make it look, look nice, right? So we are going to use a importer on this side. And then we are going to use an exporter on this side. Now, this is also going to need some power. So I guess we're going to have to run some power over to it. So would it make more sense to be on that side of the wall then? So we just run that over, run that behind. It might make more sense on the opposite side. All right, hold on. Let me get the setup better. All right, guys, we are kind of getting there with the design. Um, I just threw in this Gabaro cobblestone for the time being just to kind of even it out a little bit make the textures a little bit <laughs> uniform because we got a bunch of different things here, right? We got normal Gabaro, weathered limestone, weather, yeah, more weathered limestone, like just a bunch of stuff. So I'm like, let's just organize it out and try to get some uniformity to it. But here we go. It is a little bit crazy here. Uh, we do have our crafter though. So here we go. This is really nice. All we got to do now is get our coal chunks, right? Um, which are these guys right here. Go to use cases. Um, and then all we got to do is be able to convert them oh i think that's what i was looking at right Coal chunks go into this and make actual coal so really we would want to loop it over there um, and utilize it in that way otherwise it's going to make the coal clusters um, which is not really what i want to to do with that i really would much rather it turn into normal coal which it looks like you can turn it into coal ore so I definitely am losing my mind. So that's what, what it was. Okay. Well, this is really good for automation if you really chose to do so. We will eventually. Um, actually, we might be able to. Like, let's see. If we go to copper, we have a bunch of copper chunks right now, right? I don't know if we can turn those into anything good in the crafting. We can use those. Um, but that doesn't really do anything for us. So I guess that's a dud for the time being, unfortunately. I guess really what we need to do is run importers and exporters over to our um, 
pressure over here. Realistically, that's what we got to do. Um, and unfortunately, I don't think we have any setup. We have power generation running this way, but we don't have uh, anything else to help us in that case scenario. So, but what we can do is take a lot of this copper out and we could take a lot of that, those coal chunks out because we got a lot of them, right? And throw all of this in here. It's going to take a good amount of power, right? But in the end, it'll totally be worth it uh, to have it like so. So it's taking some copper right now. We can actually bump up the speed on this as well with time in the bottle. If you guys were curious, you can do that. I know I mentioned it for some of the other things thus far that we've gone through, but you can actually use it on immersive engineering machines, even though they are multi-blocks. Um, and there we go. This is going to start filling up. we got a lot of bitmen here, uh, which we can throw back into or bit, bit moon, bit moon. Um, and this is going to start making some coal for us, hopefully. Okay, it's throwing in the little coal chunks right now. And there we go. We're getting a coal output, which is super nice. I guess I'll show you real quick how this can work. All you got to do is I think you can do it anywhere on here, but you can easily bump it up and you can see it really pushing it through a lot of that stuff there. Um, that's going to get a lot of export for us. So we might actually even want to upgrade our chest here really quick um, to something a little bit better. Maybe like an obsidian. Actually, I think I realized that it won't work with these kinds of chests, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so actually maybe our better bet would be just to make this a double chest for the time being and uh, have that be that, right? So, all right guys. Well, anyways, we are going to wrap it up there. We are at 30 minutes. So I hope you guys did enjoy this episode. Uh, if you did, feel free to leave a like down below or better yet, leave a comment. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say on this series. If you are new here and you do want to follow along, definitely hit that subscribe button and bell notification. I'll let you know every single time a new episode is posted to the channel. And guys, don't worry, the next episode, I got some plans still in mind. I do want to get into that thermal series stuff. I also want to do some exploration. There's a couple of materials I would really like to go out and try to find. Um, so we might be trying to do that relatively soon here. I do stream over on Twitch. Um, right now, it's a little bit shoddy on when we actually do go live over on Twitch. Um, but if you do want to follow over there and hit the notification, it'll let you know when we do go live over on Twitch. Or if you don't want to do that and you just want to be notified elsewhere, there's community Discord, which I will usually post when we go live over there as well. Or any updates to the channel as well, I do post them over there. Um, and both of those links can be found in the description down below. But other than that, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, hanging out with me today as we got our multi-block centrifuge up and going. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take it easy.